Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to or welcome back to Kovacs Corner. I appreciate you taking the time to come through, check the video out. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit me up on any one of my other social media platforms down in the description below. And think about becoming a channel member to help support the channel, plus you have access to videos before anybody else does. But anyway, we are getting back into another Kovacs Reacts video right here. Purple Pineapple Television is the creator and as always the creator page and also the video page are going to be down in the description. We're going to be taking a look at his video, Old Yu-Gi-Oh! Archetypes That Need mod Modern Support, which makes sense. So without further ado, feel free to follow Purple Pineapple Television. Links will be down in the description below if this is stuff that you're into. As you can see, he kind of has a series going on right here. Uh, the Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! from episode 4, 6, 7. And he probably has quite a plethora of more, which is pretty dope. We might even be able to uh, start getting into those and breaking down what it is that we feel that we might have missed as we uh, were growing up watching the watching the Yu-Gi-Oh series. But anyway, without further ado, we are about to hop into this video. Old Yu-Gi-Oh archetypes that need modern support. Let's get into it. I like to think that Konami of both America and Japan simply forgot just how many archetypes there are in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Seeing that the so many archetypes, man. Like a ridiculous amount of archetypes. They've completely abandoned several old archetypes whose only hope for an inkling of a modern support wave comes in either completely generic type and or attribute support or unintended synergy with newer archetypes. Today, let's look at three long forgotten archetypes that should get modern support and what they could receive to better support their own. I think that this is Celtic Guardian. Playstyle. I'm a firm believer that if yeah. it weren't for the Dark Side of Dimensions movie, Celtic Guard of Noble Arms would have never existed, and neither would the now dubbed Celtic Guard archetype. With the less than substantial amount of cards in this archetype, and most that we'll talk about, it becomes a challenge to identify what the deck's playstyle actually is. Well, it's I've always wanted to see a Celtic Guardian deck, like an actual Celtic Guardian deck. I feel like it would have been, it would be dope to see. Give the old college attempt. Some Noble Arms special summons another Celtic Guard monster from hand as a. Well, realistically, you could fusion summon monsters with the Celtic Guardian, right? So you could end up choosing a fusion deck that involves the Celtic Guardian and another archetype in order to create uh, the fusion monsters, having the fusion materials like Celtic Guardian and dragons. You usually see that, like Celtic Guardian red eyes and stuff too. Say with like magicians. Field college attempt. Noble Arms special Gaia. summons another Celtic Guard monster from hand as a soft once per turn and has a mass draw effect upon inflicting battle damage. Obnoxious protects itself in battle from monsters with 1900 or more attack. I think I can work with that. The deck would benefit from archetypal retrains of reinforcement of the army as well as Marauding Captain. A Marauding Captain retrain would pair nicely with Noble Arms to help swarm the field, and the deck also needs more means of dumping the hand to allow Noble Arms to attack. Another good monster addition would be a level 4 Celtic Guard monster that could special summon itself if you control another Celtic Guard monster. That would actually be a pretty dope effect, I ain't gonna lie. So that you're able to you're able to synchro summon or XZ summon another card. Building onto the effect of Obnoxious, a field spell that protects your Celtic Guard monsters from the effects of your opponent's monsters with 1900 or more attack would be very welcomed. As is, they can't withstand any interruption. You could charitably title the Celtic Guard archetype as a battle focused strategy, so a quick play spell card that halves the attack of your opponent's monsters would also aid to them closing out games. And with these additions, Celtic Guard could also make use of an in-theme extra deck monster, be that a rank 4 or a link monster, and I'd want to see that monster offer recovery of your destroyed Celtic Guard monsters, as well as protection from your opponent's back row. Along That's smart play. That's super smart. That's a creative way of, of uh, building a deck around the Celtic Guardian. Celtic Inside Guard. the generic cards that already support the Celtic Guard monsters, these inclusions could at the very least push them into a rogue meta status, which is ultimately the goal that I've set out to accomplish with the archetypes we'll be discussing. And an archetype that I find could fit really well into that niche if given the proper modern support is Malice Boris, an archetype of only three level 2 fiend monsters themed around 
eating utensils. No. I feel like you'd actually be able to do something with this with like summon skull. Not really sure what the aesthetic and name correlation are, but we've got something to build on. All of their effects deal with swarming the field with malice forest monsters by means of pulling different names from the graveyard. It couldn't get any easier. So first and obviously, they need more monsters to continue their string of spamming. We haven't even covered the legendary Spork or the damn near mythical Soup Spoon. So Spork, Soup Spoon, and the Knife. Ancient Gear Statue. Nice. For like extra support going into it, eh? So that you're able to continuously summon from your graveyard kind of thing. So, Grave Diggers, it would be good in Grave Diggers too, then. Of spamming. I feel. We haven't even covered the legendary Spork or the damn near mythical Soup Spoon. There's an entire world of fancy cutlery to be incorporated into their playstyle. And because they want different names in the graveyard, an in theme foolish burial and or graceful charity would be a massive buff to this deck. Draw three on a required discard of two Malice Vorus monsters, ideally with different names, and a single Foolish Burial, even without archetype-specific support, makes all of their effects live. Where That's the main crazy. deck monsters are themed around smaller eating utensils, I think it would be a nice aesthetic progression to have potential extra deck monsters themed around larger cooking utensils, like a butcher's knife or a meat mallet to beat your opponent's meat. Oh. <laughs> <My> idea <laughs> To beat your opponent's meat, eh? That's that's cool for the archetypes and stuff, but like, bro. Fucking <laughs> utensils, like a butcher's knife or a meat mallet to beat your opponent's meat. Pause. My idea would be a Link 1 Pause. that could bring out a Malice Boris <laughs> monster from the deck. The problem arises that they don't really have an end goal Medicaid with the field guy. spamming that they're capable of. They can turn out pretty big bodies in generic extra deck boss monsters, but they're almost entirely relegated to a single big link monster unless you have the immediate use of something to put another Malice Forest monster on the field to start the loop again, which can only go so far. So, if we decided to go against giving them an archetypal boss monster to include in their end board, the deck desperately needs cards that can continue the loop after committing to anything above a Link 2 monster. While more Malice Forest monster names can assist with this, either another smaller extra deck monster akin to the Sprite Engine or in theme recovery spells would be the best method to approach this playstyle with. And the third. So, to have to include like sprites with it, to include it into a sprite deck. That's, that's pretty creative, man. The third archetype for today's discussion can be loosely compared to Malice Force as it wants your monsters to be sent to the graveyard from the field, and that is Interplanetary Purpley Thorny. A two-monster archetype that nearly became the mascots for this channel, so I've got a soft spot for them. Their two monsters, Dragon and Beast, both share the effect to special summon themselves when a monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect. Dragon summons itself from the hand as a non once per turn, and Beast summons itself from the grave as a hard once per turn. The problem comes in the fact that they are both level 5 monsters, so you're relying on another monster on board getting wiped out when you have Beast set up in your graveyard and Dragon ready in the hand. Let's work with that. The deck, as has been the case thus far, needs more. Okay, this is going to be cool. I want to see how he's going to break this down in order to get these two out while using those uh, Malice monsters more monsters. Those new monsters need to specifically mimic the effect of Dragon because Beast has a when you can effect, meaning it's prone to missing Cosmo timing. Cyber Additional effects are also a necessity. Because we're dealing nice. with level 5s, this archetype would benefit from a couple monsters who also hold a Cyber Dragon special summoning effect to start putting bodies on the field. Other new monsters should either be adding different names of interplanetary purpley thorny from deck to hand or milling them upon summon. Since the monsters all carry the special summoning clause that is reliant on your monsters getting destroyed, the deck needs its own in-theme tools to accomplish that. A deck is bad when it relies on your opponent playing the game to function, so let's fix that. New back row could destroy interplanetary purpley thorny monsters you control to gain certain effects. Be that negating your opponent's monster effects for the turn, banishing your opponent's cards, or cutting their monster's attack power. I know that- That's pretty crazy. That's crazy to think about. Hold on, let, let's let's hear that back real quick. Your purpley thorny monsters you control to gain certain effects. Be that negating your opponent's monster effects for the turn, banish negating for the turn, banishing your opponent's cards, or cutting their monsters' attack card. power. I know that last one is attack probably the least relevant of all, but if the new monster half. stat spreads mimic what we have currently with Dragon and Beast, they do need some help in that department. 
So, not only does this put debuffs on your opponent, but at the cost of a single destruction, depending on your setup at the time of activation, you're able to flood the field with spacey boys. My last addition, I'll be up front, is very gimmicky, but could potentially work in this deck. Because both Dragon and Beast, as well as what would be the new monsters, focus on a monster you control being destroyed and sent to either graveyard, a Link monster whose arrows point only at your opponent's board that can take control of a monster it points to, would make a great use of your opponent's cards to fulfill your own activation requirements. I'd and say. as an added bonus, it would be nice to see either protection coming from this Link monster, or preventing your interplanetary purpley thorny monster's effects from being negated. All three of these decks have not only potential, but an actual playstyle that can easily be built onto. Their numbers are so small that it's made far more difficult to run them as a deck, and they become more of tech cards when there are overall better options in that. So, that Thorny Dragon deck looks pretty crazy. If you were able to get the engine working correctly in that deck to be able to summon on top of with uh, the effects that they have to negate, so on and so forth, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty to cool. run them as a deck, and they become more of tech cards when there are overall better options in that regard. The decks need modern support, and I don't mean the one card legacy, here's a bone, now stop complaining type of support. I mean a proper wave of new tools that support and bolster each of these decks current strategies to push them into being serviceable against the meta decks that get pushed to sell the modern sets. Honestly, they should they should just have a deck, I mean uh, a box come out with support for older cards, for like the older kind of class of decks that would do that would be pretty cool that's something to think about konami konami should think about that but that's going to wrap up today's discussion guys let me know your thoughts what's an archetype that you feel needs new modern support drop a comment down below if you like the video don't forget to drop a big thumbs up it's greatly appreciated as always guys and until next time this has been purple pineapple tv signing up so i feel that tunes should get uh new support realistic like in my opinion i feel that tune should get uh should get support i would like to make a tune deck someday which would be cool as fuck i was actually looking over on amazon thinking about getting the the classic tune boxes for the characters the pegasus box i was looking at it i haven't pulled the trigger about it yet but i'm thinking about it <laughs> just so you know but yeah no man let me know what decks you would like to see uh support come to whether it be a classic deck a modern deck so on and so forth let me know also don't forget check out purple pineapple television links are going to be down in the description as well and yeah man feel free hit me up on any one of my other social media platforms down in the description below and think about becoming a channel member where you will have access to videos before anybody else I just want to thank everybody who came through and watched the video. I appreciate every single one of you. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike, so on and so forth. But yeah, no, man, it's going to do it for us. Have yourselves a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys next time, man. Peace.